I want to go through a problem that we had in class and what we're going to be talking about is a basic concept that really is going to permeate everything that we talk about both from the equity uh, method of accounting and then when we get into the acquisition method of accounting and what we really want to focus on is the difference between the carrying value the fair value and the purchase price of the asset so what we have here is I have the table set up from the problem that we went through in class and the problem that we went through in class is problem 115 so what I've essentially tried to do here is to work through the problem from the perspective of the actual problem that you see in the textbook so these are not different numbers these are the numbers coming from the textbook on January 1st, 2014, Ridge Road Company acquired 20% of the voting shares of Salk Trail for $2,700,000 in cash. So we received 20% for $2,700,000 in cash. Both companies provide commercial internet services that describes why they have merged, but the real focus is the fact that what we have is we have the carrying value. So you notice the carrying value here represents the book value in the balance sheet of the acquired company. In this case, it's Shock Company. We then have fair value. The next piece that we want to do in relationship to the accounting is to understand what the fair value is of the identifiable assets and liabilities. So in this case, what you notice is that there's two assets that have a different value. Computer equipment is at book value $5 million. The fair value is $5.7 million. Patent technology is $100,000. The fair value is $4 million. A couple of other things here is you notice that the computer equipment has a remaining useful life of seven years and the patent technology is estimated to have a useful life of three years. So the whole focus of what we're attempting to do now is to understand how we're going to allocate and distribute the investment account over time. So notice a couple of things here that we're going to calculate. The first thing is how much of Rich Road's $2,700,000 is attributed, attributed to Goodwill. The next piece is what should Rich Road report for its equity in Salt Trail's earnings in its income statement for 2014 and 2015 and then we're looking at the actual investment account of what is the ending balance for these two years. Now the thing that we need to really focus on and this is what we had talked about in class is when you look at these two elements right here the income and the equity what we need to understand is that the income coming over from the acquired company where we are uh, having income from investment as well as an increase in equity based upon our share of the acquired company income but we need to reduce based upon the allocation of the excess depreciation and we'll explain this as we go forward but the first thing that we need to understand is what is goodwill and what is attributed to the increase in fair value. So what we have here is we have assets as a positive number, liabilities as a negative number. You notice the liabilities did not change. So we simply sum these two numbers. We'll drag this number here. And what we're saying is that at full book value, the worth of the acquired company is $5,175,000. At fair value, the assets and liabilities are worth $11,625,000. However, we didn't acquire the whole company. We simply acquired 20%. So if we multiply these numbers by 20%, this is what we get. So our share of the carrying value, of the book value, is $1,035,000. Our share of the identifiable assets is two million three hundred three hundred and twenty five thousand dollars so what did we purchase the company for well we purchased the company for two million seven hundred 
$700,000. So what we need to understand here as we're going through this is two things. And, and it's really important for us to sort of comprehend the differences here. So the difference between the fair value and the carrying value are these items, some of which may be depreciable, and these are going to have an impact on the equity account and are also going to have an impact on the amount of income that we carry over. Because in fact, if the fair value is related to a depreciable item, we need to allocate the excess depreciation. When we look at the difference between these numbers, the fair value and the purchase price, this is where we're going to get goodwill. So in this case, goodwill is simply the difference between $2.7 million. So we're going to add this or subtract uh, from $2.7 million. We're going to subtract the fair value and we get a number of $375,000. Again, the reason this is goodwill is because what we have done is we have paid more for the company or for our share of the company than the fair value of the identifiable assets. Now this is kind of a simple problem in the sense that the only two items that we have that are different between fair value and carrying value is the computer technology and the patent technology. So let's look at the differences here. So if we look at the difference is we have $5,700,000 minus $5,000,000 and this gives us $700,000. We bring this down and the patent technology is, uh, the difference is $3,900,000. Now, 20% of this is simply going to be the uh, $700,000 times 20%. Same thing here is $140,000 and $780,000. The reason we need to include these numbers is simply because we have acquired only 20% of the excess value. Now, let's go through this and what we understand is the fact that the equipment has a useful life of seven years and the patent technology has a useful life of three years. So the excess depreciation is simply the R piece of it divided by, and this was seven years for the computer equipment and the other piece of the $780,000 is divided by three years. Okay. We can sum this and let me put this over here. So every year, or at least for the next three years, it's going to be $280,000. That's the excess depreciation. After that, we have $20,000 of excess depreciation because again, the patent technology is only uh, depreciated for three years. Okay, now back to some things that we talked about in intermediate accounting is our income is increased by our share of investees' income. Okay, so that income, net income, uh, $1.8 million in 2000, 2014. 2015, Sock Company or Sock Trail had $1,985,000. Okay, so we know what that is. So that increases income, increases equity. And then our share of the dividends are, or the total dividends are here, our share of the dividends are 20%. Okay? That is going to decrease the equity. And of course, we have cash, but we're really not interested in cash. So let's go through this. And again, the additional piece that we need to consider is the fact that we have this excess depreciation of $280,000. Okay, so let's go through this. So 20% of the income is simply the $1.8 million times 0.2. So we got $360,000 here. And then for 2015 is $397,000. However, we have the excess 
depreciation. And so we have the excess depreciation. And uh, let me actually move this over here so that we don't get things confused. So what we have here is our equity income. Okay. Make this nice and pretty. Make put this in the middle. We'll probably put this circles around it so we can uh, make it nice and pretty. Okay. So what is the excess depreciation? Well, we are going to subtract the excess depreciation to 80, and this also is going to be 280. And so our equity income is 360 minus the 280. So it's $80,000 for 2014. And for 2015, it's $117,000. Okay, and again, what we have is we have the 20% of the income. And then we have up here the excess depreciation that's based upon the 20% of $280,000. So our equity income coming from Salk Trail is $80,000 for 2014 and $117,000 for 2015. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Now, let's consider this now from the perspective of the equity balance. So we've already talked about the fact that the equity balance is the beginning balance plus net income minus depreciation, or plus net income minus depreciation that, we've, that we have here, and then it's also minus the dividends that were declared, okay? So what do we have here? So what we have here is our beginning number is $2,700,000. That's how much we actually started with. We then add to this the $80,000, and then we sat, subtract from it are 20% times the dividends because we don't get the $150,000 dividends. That's how much was declared by Salk. We only get how much we get, which is the amount of the 20%. Okay, so at the end of 2014, the equity balance, and again, this is the balance sheet item. This is going to show up as an investment in Salk company is $2,750,000. Now let's look at 2015. So we start off, the beginning balance is going to be last year's ending balance, which is $2,750,000. We add to this 2015's number of the equity income, and then we subtract 20% times the dividends that were declared. And I believe these are the correct answers. In fact, I know these are the correct answers because I checked them, um, and uh, that's as simple as that. And again, the takeaway on this is this is absolutely critical for you to understand how these numbers kind of come together. And back to the original formula is these are the things that you absolutely need to understand is the carrying value, the fair value, and the purchase price. We then need to allocate this from the perspective of how much the percentage that we acquire, in this case we only acquired 20%, and then what we're these three numbers here, the perspective of how we're actually allocating this to goodwill, to liable assets, and the items that are identifiable assets that are depreciable, sometimes you have identifiable assets that are not depreciable, is you're going to see here. By the way, as we continue on, what you're going to find is that sometimes the liability values change. So as we're looking at this, you need to sort of understand the components of it. But if we really understand how we're actually getting to these numbers in this problem, it's going to be a lot easier when we go to the uh, next chapters. Okay, thank you very much and have a good day.